In this video, I will explain how to read words with Shiva. Usually, students find this material difficult, but I will try to explain everything as simple as possible. In order to understand Shiva, we must keep in mind everything that we studied in the first lesson, and especially the duration of the Hebrew vowels. So let us refresh in our memory which vowels are long. All matris lexionis are long. Cholim, Kamets, and Tzerah are also long. What about the short vowels? Patach, Kamets Hatuf, Hirik, Sigol, and Kibbutz are short. Why do we need to know which vowels are long and which vowels are short? Because short vowels usually form a closed syllable and the long vowels usually form a long syllable. And this is important to remember when we need to understand the Shiva. So, what is Shiva? Shiva is a very short vowel. It is so short that it even doesn't have a particular sound. The sound of Shiva can be described as a very short vowel between E and E. Shiva occurs in the collocation of several consonants. When several consonants come together, it is very difficult to pronounce them without inserting a kind of a very short vowel in between. In Hebrew, this very short vowel is called Shiva, and it looks like a colon, and it is always written beneath the letter. Usually, Shiva occurs in a modified word when the reduction of vowels took place. Uh, for example, the word davar, which means a word, a singular form. If we make a plural form of the same uh, noun, it would be devarim. Do you see? Because the suffix of the plural, plural suffix is added to the word, the first vowel is reduced to shiva. So we do not have a kamets, but we have a shiva in this case. Okay, now we need to uh, discuss two types or two kinds of shiva. There is a vocal shiva and a silent shiva. The rules to define when shiva should be vocal and when it should be silent are a little bit complicated. But now I will try to simpli simplify them. In most cases, Shiva is vocal. Shiva is silent when it closes a syllable, and also Shiva is silent in the end of the word. So now let us consider the second rule. Shiva is silent when it closes a syllable. It uh, may seem a little bit complicated, but I will uh, suggest to you a rule of thumb. There's, this rule uh, probably doesn't cover all the cases, but in most of the cases it will work very well. So, if you want to understand if Shiva is silent or vocal, we need to look at the preceding syllable. And if the vowel in the preceding syllable is short, it means the Shiva is silent. So, now let us consider several examples. The word Mishpat. Uh, we have a shiva, and the preceding vowel is hirik, and hirik is a short vowel, and it means that the following shiva is silent, and it is not pronounced, and we read this word as mishpat. Let us consider another example. Misbach. Again, we have a shiva, and the preceding vowel is hirik, and it is a short vowel. That is why shiva is silent. And we read this word as misbeach. Okay, let us consider one more example. Now, again, we have a shiva, and the preceding vowel is patach, and patach is also a short vowel. That is why Shiva is silent, and we read this word as Malka. And now, uh, let us consider a case when Shiva occurs in the end of the word. In the end of the word, Shiva is always silent. So, let us consider an example. Kataft. 
we can see here two shivas and both of them are silent. Now, uh, let us uh, briefly consider the rules for the vocal shiva. Shiva is always vocal in the beginning of the word. For example, Yerushalayim, the first shiva, and it is vocal, it is pronounced like very, very short a, Yerushalayim. Uh, shiva is vocal when it is preceded by the syllable with a long vowel. So when uh, the preceding vowel is short, shiva is silent. When the preceding vowel is long, shiva is vocal. For example, shofetin. Here we have a shiva and uh, the preceding syllable has a vowel uh, holim vav. And holim vav is a long vowel. That is why Shiva is a vocal, and we need to read this word as shofetim. And finally, shiva is vocal after a silent shiva. When we have two shivas going together, uh, then uh, the first one usually is silent and the second one is vocal. But uh, this rule works only when uh, shiva, two shivas uh, occurs to shiva occur in the middle of the word. So in this case, we have mishpechot. The first shiva is uh, silent because it is preceded by hirik and hirik is a uh, short vowel. And the second shiva is uh, pronounced, is vocal. Okay, now let us summarize everything that we learn in this short video. In the beginning of the word, shiva is always vocal. If shiva occurs in the middle of the word, we need to take a look at the vowel in the preceding syllable. If it is short, then shiva is silent. And in the end of the word, shiva is silent.